simply leaving an ELV to rot in a yard, burning it or crushing it and burying it, exposes the environment and people to untold hazardous waste. It also loses what can be valuable materials. In this video, you learn about the correct procedures that apply, which starts with the facility that's going to do the work. ELVs should only be handled by facilities that practice environmentally sound management, or ESM, for short. ESM is defined in the Basel Convention as taking all practicable steps to ensure that hazardous waste or other wastes are managed in a manner which will protect human health and the environment against the adverse effects which may result from such waste. Such facilities will implement ESM by means of two important processes prior to vehicle dismantling. Firstly, when the vehicles arrive at a facility, they should be inspected for leaks and any unwanted materials that could have been placed in the vehicle. Any oil or fluid leaking from the vehicle should be collected immediately using drip trays. Vehicles that are leaking should be moved immediately to the dismantling area and processed. ELVs awaiting dismantling must be stored on an impermeable surface with spill containment. This should include a sealed drainage system as the primary means of containment. Spill kits to deal with spillages of oils, fuels and acids should be present. Devices such as still traps and oil separators should also be available for the treatment of stormwater runoff. And if engines or greasy parts are exposed, they should be covered with a tarpaulin or other covering to prevent rain contact and runoff. Runoff management is an important consideration for waste vehicle dismantlers. Best practices to prevent or minimize pollutants from entering stormwater runoff and reducing the volume of stormwater requiring management include, among others, regular cleanup, collection and containment of debris in storage areas, and other housekeeping practices such as spill control and employee training. And lastly, facilities must keep an inventory of the waste vehicles stored at the facility. This should include the make, model, and year of each vehicle, the date the vehicle arrived, and the date it was last inspected for leaks. Dismantling an ELV must start with depollution. That is the removal of all harmful materials and substances. This must always be done on an impermeable surface with sealed drainage systems and spill control equipment on hand. Work must be carried out by properly trained technicians using the correct tools for the work and wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment. As a minimum, this should include safety boots, full body overalls, eye protectors and air defenders. Before you start, you should also check that you have sufficient storage containers of the right types for the materials you'll be removing. For example, different types of fluids should be stored in separate containers. Waste oils and waste fluids should ideally be stored in steel drums. And mercury containing devices should be stored in plastic containers with airtight lid. The fact sheet accompanying this video provides information on the correct types of containers to use. And don't forget that most of what you remove from the ELV can be recycled. So it's important to check with the recyclers how they want the materials to be delivered, what's okay to mix together, and what needs to be kept separate. We can now start the depollution process. First, remove the battery and place into a suitable container. Then, remove the fuel filler cap, the oil filler cap, and the radiator cap. Set the heater control to maximum. This will help to ease the draining of the coolant. Remove the wheels and tires and store them correctly. And then remove all parts identified as hazardous, such as mercury switches. Now you need to lift the vehicle to enable access to the underside. Make sure that the vehicle is properly secure and steady when lifted from the ground. Remember that you may need to exert some force to remove parts, so you need the vehicle secure. Now you can start draining the vehicle. Drain the engine oil 
and remove the oil filter. Drain the transmission oil and the differential oil if one is present. If the vehicle had air conditioning, the unit should be degassed. Drain the coolant, then the brake and clutch fluid. Remove the catalytic converter, drain the washer bottle, if fitted, drain the power steering reservoir. And then drain the shock absorbers. You then need to replace all the plugs and stoppers you removed to enable the draining. There will still be some drops of fluid left and it's important to prevent these escaping when moving the vehicle around. If you can't use the original plugs and stoppers, use a suitable alternative such as a plastic bung. You can now bring the vehicle back down to ground level. The final part of the process is to deal with the airbags. Ideally, these need to be deployed in situ before removal and the vehicle manufacturer will provide the information needed to do this. If they cannot be deployed in situ, then they need to be removed and stored in a manner that prevents them from being accidentally deployed. Older models will normally have just one airbag in the steering wheel. More modern cars have many more, so check with the manufacturer's information to make sure that you've dealt with all of them. And also, some cars use similar explosive devices with thin seat belt tensioners, and these need to be dealt with in the same way. You can then continue to dismantle the vehicle. You need to keep in mind that whilst you have removed the majority of the hazardous materials, some will remain. Residual oil will be in the engine. There will still be fuel in the fuel lines and fuel pump. Interior fabrics and seat foams are treated with flame retardants and should be disposed of in an environmentally sound manner. And accumulated carbon deposits in the exhaust system can be easily dislodged as dust. Previous owners may also have made modifications to the vehicle, so you may encounter things that you were not expecting to find. This could include nitro oxide injection systems, hydraulic suspension, and vinyl wraps. So it's important to be alert to the hazards these create and approach their removal and dismantling with care. Vehicles also contain a large number of electrical components. Satellite navigation units, engine management units, which are small computers, entertainment systems, displays and controls, and so on. All of these fall under the term e-waste for which exists a set of measures and controls relating to removal treatment, transportation, and disposal. We're not going to cover e-waste in this video, but there's a fact sheet available from the link below where you can find out more information on these processes and best practice. When removing engine parts for resale, parts should only be cleaned if absolutely necessary. And parts should be stored on a rack and excessive stockpiling should be avoided. And eventually, you'll end up with the bare carcass of the vehicle ready for crushing or shredding. And at the end of the process, you'll have hazardous materials that are safely contained as well as recyclable materials ready to be sent off and made into a brand new vehicle. Applying this process, you'll be protecting your community and country, boosting the economy, protecting the environment, and contributing towards keeping the Caribbean lovely.